Hello everybody, this is Dr. Kevin Connors. Welcome to session seven, at a new look for cancer. We've been talking about suppressor systems. Uh, normal program cell death is one suppressor system. That is how your body deals with a damaged cell of any kind. If it's been, the damage has been, has uh, been in the DNA in the replication phase, the cell should go under apoptosis simply because of that. So that is a protective measure. So uh, your, your apoptotic cycle has to do with just cleaning up older cells so that you, the mother cell as it reproduces is cleaned up and gotten rid of. It causes the cell to basically implode and then your immune system helps carry that away and destroy any living pieces to it. Also, your cell has a membrane around it. That's a phospholipid bilayer. And in that membrane are certain proteins that act as receptors. So if you want to think of them as a lock, and the key is something that attaches to that receptor that turns that receptor on or turns that receptor off. So that turning on of the receptor actually is a chemical process that changes the the shape of the protein inside the cell, and it turns on a mechanism, per se, just like you opened up the door and uh, uh, with the key, and it turned on a mechanism that, that, that began a process within the cell cytoplasm. Today we're going to talk about estrogen beta receptors and estrogen receptors inside the cell that affect different cancers. We showed you this picture last week. That is very complicated. That is a schematic of a cell membrane. Its receptors on that orange part of the picture here, the nucleus in the middle, and just this is actually an abbreviation of the different cell intracellular processes that take place within inside the cell. We want to talk about what happens from a cellular membrane perspective today. So here's some pictures of some different cell membranes. So on the right hand side here, this is looking at how a cell divides. There's actually a receptor on the cell membrane that can stimulate cell division. So if that receptor is, is greater expressed, if there's a greater expression of that receptor, which we're going to see in HER2 positive cancers, then that it's going to stimulate a more rapid replication of that cell, which with cancer, that's not what we want to happen. So it can be a receptor abnormality. So there's a greater expression of receptors on that cell membrane for some reason, which we'll talk about. And with that greater ex expression of, that, uh, of those receptors, then th there's a greater chance of them being stimulated. And then there's whatever that receptor does, it will stimulate that process within the cell. So if I have more growth factor receptors on the cell membrane, the chance of them being stimulated increases and the, the chance of the cell replicating uh, more rapidly increases. So on the bottom picture, on the a little bit on the left is a normal cell. It, this picture just shows two of the replication receptors. And this is what's different with a cancerous cell. It has all those different uh, receptors expressed on the cell membrane. So the chance of them uh, being uh, turned on goes up. So different receptor site abnormalities. There's a, what's called a CRAS pathway that can be upregulated. That means it can be increased and will increase cellular proliferation. So that's what can lead to metastasis and further growth of the cancer. So again, summarize. If you have an increased amount of receptors that stimulate proliferation of a cell on the cell membrane, then it's going to stimulate that uh, cell replication. So how do we get those? So here's what's called HER2 positive. Estrogen receptor positive cancers uh, have normally you have these different receptors that stimulate down to the nucleus if you look at that picture on the cell replication of that nucleus if i have an abnormality then uh, expressing if i have a breast cancer that expresses her two positive uh, 
receptor sites, this is what that cancer looks like. So the cancer cells have all these different receptors on the cell membrane. So the chance of the cancer being more aggressive is higher. Is that bad? Is that good? Well, if you talk to an oncologist, they would probably rather have a person with estrogen receptor positive cancer because there are some medications out there that are have been developed for this. So just in summary again, estrogen then binds to that receptor because that is a stimulus in the replication cycle, binds to that receptor and causes that, that uh, breast cancer cell to replicate. So the cells divide uh, because you have too much HER2 uh, receptors on the cell membrane, causes rapid cell division. Uh, and the reason why an oncologist would rather see a HER2 positive cancer versus a triple negative cancer is because of the fact that there's been some medication developed to help remove the, uh, the signaling process. So there's a couple different medications in this process. One is to bind to the cells to decrease the availability of the HER2 receptors, and one is uh, tamoxifen, which helps remove the estrogens that attach to those receptors. Do they work? Well, yes and no. There's mixed trials about them. So I want to talk about some natural ways to deal with HER2-positive breast cancers and uh, uterine and ovarian cancers here. First thing I want to talk about is soy. So most of you have heard that soy is really bad because it breaks down to estrogens. Well, that's true. Uh, but it's not the whole story. So fermented soy and the specific products of soy are actually really good for breast cancer, especially for estrogen-positive breast cancers because they have the ability to displace the estrogen in those uh, in those receptor sites. So what happens with HER2 positive uh, breast cancer is that the overexpression of the receptors is one thing. But there's, the, you go back to why do we have an overexpression of those receptors? And there's some controversy with that. Many of the theories surround an overexpression of what are called xenoestrogens in our body. So normally, men and women have estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone in their body. Women have a greater concentration of estrogen and progesterone, thank goodness. So estrogen and progesterone act on the cell membranes. They do all sorts of things. They, don't, uh, they act as um, stimulators on, uh, on different cellular processes. They act as growth stimulators on cells as well. So uh, that's good, right? Yes, it is. The problem is, is that we have bad estrogens too. So the good estrogens, let's just summarize it as 2-hydroxyestrogen. So 2-hydroxyestrogen is, is an estrogen in our body. And then we have another estrogen that would be a bad estrogen, which would be 16-hydroxyestrogen. Now, there's about 30-some different estrogens, so I'm summarizing this. So let's just summarize it as good estrogen, which is normally made by the woman's ovaries and adrenal glands, and bad estrogens, which come from our environment, which not only women are exposed to, but men are exposed to as well. So good estrogens are those made by the body. Bad estrogens are those found in the environment. So why is that important? Well, if I am exposed to more bad estrogens, uh, that can affect my cells. One of the things that it can do to my cells, and this is one of the arguments on why we have such an increase in cancer rates. Remember from presentation number one, we went from 1 in 21 Americans in 1971 when we begun this war on cancer to 1 in 2.5 Americans get cancer now. When we've been working on this battle for 40-some years, we're losing the war. Well, why? Well, one of the reasons, there's many, but one of the reasons is our overexposure to bad estrogens. Bad estrogens come from plastics. 
come from chemicals. There's bad estrogens and pesticides and herbicides in everyday household chemicals. There's estrogens found in food. There's estrogens fed to livestock. All that gets into our meat, gets into our milk, gets into our cheese, gets into our food supply. So you cannot be not exposed to bad estrogens. You could live in a bubble. You could be the greenest person in the world. You could never eat anything but organic. You could grow everything in your garden. You are still going to be exposed to bad estrogens. These estrogens from our environment are called xenoestrogens. They're estrogens from our environment. They're not made in our body. The truth is you can run, but you cannot hide. There is no way that you can get away from this exposure to these bad estrogens. Well, what's so big deal about it? Isn't my liver supposed to deal with bad things that enter my body? Well, your liver is supposed to deal with different chemicals that enter your body. The problem is, is that these bad estrogens circulate in your body and they can fool our body to thinking that they are the real deal. So one of the things that these bad estrogens do is they stimulate cell reproduction. That's not a good thing because that leads to cancer. The other thing, it gets worse, that the increased concentration of these bad estrogens increases the expression of these uh, receptors on the cell membrane. So the simple exposure of an increased amount of estrogens, think of it this way. So think of the cell, if we could put it in a cartoon, going, wow, there's all these estrogens we must need more receptors for them. So your cells are reproducing cells that have this HER2 positive expression, meaning that they have a greater concentration of estrogen receptors on the cell membrane. So it's almost like your cells are setting themselves up for rapid replication. Well, it's part of a whole feedback loop of your body. There's so much estrogen in the system, we must need more receptors for the estrogen. So that is a major theory on how cancer just ends up promoting itself here. So how are we going to deal with this problem? Number one, we have to decrease our exposure to xenoestrogens. And I'm not going to get into that in this talk. But there's a whole presentation, matter of fact, multiple presentations on this because this is so, so, so important, not just with cancers, but with so many other issues that we have. We can also act just like these drugs. There are some natural foods that will not just decrease the expression of these uh, these receptor sites, these HER2 receptor sites, but they will actually dislodge the bad estrogens from these receptor sites. And then number three, there are some different nutritional products that you could use that will actually grab onto these xenoestrogens and help pull them out of the body. And these are absolutely essential. Probably for everybody should be taking these products Definitely, if you have any history of breast cancer in your family, and absolutely definitely, if you have any history of, of estrogen receptor positive breast cancer in your family, um, your children should be taking these products. You need to be chelating xenoestrogens out of your body because this receptor abnormality is now an epigenetic defect. So now you'll give birth to a child that also has the ability to have uh, the same genetic, because it's changed by our environment, it's an epigenetic defect in your, uh, on your cell membranes. You have an increased amount of uh, HER2 positive receptors. So you're HER2 positive. So what is this all to do with soy? Well, fermented soy and some of the soy isolates have the ability to dislodge that bad estrogen from the receptor site. But we have to be very careful here. It's only the fermented soy and the soy isolates. It's not eating tofu. It's not drinking soy milk. So my recommendation for everybody, I never recommend soy milk. 
I never recommend high concentrations of tofu. Well, what are you supposed to do when you're a vegetarian? Well, I understand that a vegetarian is going to eat some tofu, but if you can use fermented soy, you're better off. There were some Japanese studies out that looked at uh, studies, uh, or it was a Korean study, I believe it was, women with breast cancer and the incidence of breast cancer, if they had a half a cup of miso soup every day, their incidence of breast cancer were literally completely slashed close to zero because of the effects of the fermented soy on dislodging bad estrogens uh, and uh, compared to women same culture who did not eat miso uh, as a staple. So fermented soy has the ability to upregulate P53 as well. That's the suppressor gene, remember. So that will, even if estrogen attaches to that receptor and stimulates replication, remember we talked about last time, even if that defect takes place, if you have enough P53, you will negate that and that, that cell will go under undergo apoptosis. Also, fermented soy increases BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene expression. Remember, we talked about, uh, like with Angelina Jolie, she has a genetic defect with a decreased expression of BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene. That means th those are suppressor systems, and so with a decrease expression of that, her chance of getting breast cancer is much higher. So, so does that mean you should just have your breasts removed? That's what she did. My answer is no. There's ways to increase that expression from a natural perspective. So just because you have that epigenetic defect doesn't mean that you, you have to take drastic measures. So soy isoflavoids, isoflavones, not soy itself, unless it's fermented. That's what we're talking about. So no regular soy. It has to be a fermented soy product or a specific isoflavone. So what other things increase this? So there's multiple studies about the, new, the specific chemical in celery, parsley, and figs that is very beneficial to uh, block the signaling pathway of the HER2 receptors. So that's the benefit, another benefit of juicing. So typically we don't juice figs, but we juice green uh, uh, celery and spinach and some other things in our juice. So what's our juice space is carrots, apples, and celery is our juice space. We add beets, we add parsley to the juice. You have a great um, HER2 positive drink blocker. And then also we talk about having to decrease these xenoestrogens. So if you don't have those estrogens to stimulate the HER2 positive receptors, number one, you're not going to get replication, even if you have that on your cell membrane. So um, that's what we talk about reducing xenoestrogens. But wait a second. You said you can run, but you cannot hide. Well, that's true. So this is one product that I recommend to everybody who has any history of breast cancer. Uh, it's really a product that every single person should be taking. It's DIM. So maybe you've heard of DIM. It does wonderful things in grabbing onto and getting rid of xenoestrogens in your body. Matter of fact, there's lots of studies on DIM and how it affects uh, in blocking cancer and helping prevent cancer in multiple different ways. So on the bottom of this slide, you might want to pause it because here's some sources of xenoestrogens. So remember what xenoestrogens are. These are bad estrogens in our environment. So artificial scents, air fresheners, food additives, preservatives, household cleaners, detergents, car exhaust, indoor toxins, non-organic foods, uh, personal care items. So your shampoo, your lotions, perfumes, Anything in a plastic bottle. This is the danger of drinking plastic water out of a plastic bottle. Uh, plastic food wrap, canned foods. So, uh, there's there's uh, xenoestrogens in soy if it's not fermented. Styrofoam products have a lot of xenoestrogens in it. Herbicides, fertilized pesticides, solvents, lacquers, paints, cleaners. You go, my gosh, that's my entire environment. I'm sitting on a chair that has lacquered. Uh, 
arms that has chemicals spewing from the material. I'm sitting on an artificial surface desk. How am I possibly going to get rid of all the xenoestrogens in my body? That's my point exactly. You have to be using a chelator, and everybody should be on a product with DIM. So I don't show the products on this slide. Maybe I do at the end here, but uh, it's something that everybody should be on a DIM product. So ways to reduce xenoestrogens. DIM does a lot of things. It increases the good estrogen. So here's some active estrogens in your body. Estrone turns to estradiol, and that turns to the 2-hydroxyestradiol. And these are the good estrogens on the top of this chart. The bad estrogens are the 16-hydroxyestrogens and the 4-hydroxyestrogens. These you could call the bad estrogens. DIM's effect on the bad estrogens is decreasing, and it increases the expression of the good estrogens. So it's it dramatically reduces your um, your cancer risk if you are on a DIM product. I do show some of these DIM products. This DIM Avail is DIM alone. I think it's 100 milligrams of DIM. The Libido Stim is another good product that has DIM in it. Uh, the Broccoli uh, Protect, the Broccoli Protect, has the other products of broccoli that help um, decrease xenoestrogen, de decrease HER2 expression. Curcumin, we didn't even talk about, but curcumin has a great um, affinity to decrease HER2 expression as well. Covered a lot in this week. If you have to uh, go back and listen to that, do so, and I will see you next week.